Welcome to How Preschool Teachers Do It. This is Allison Kentos. I am an early childhood educator. And this is Cindy Tarabush. I am an early childhood consultant. This podcast is for parents and early childhood professionals. Let our experience and research-based knowledge become your guide. Happy Monday, preschool peeps. Hi, Pete. We're going to share a little known fact about us. Well, only little known, maybe with people who don't know us at home. I don't know. Plus. Who don't know us at home. So here's here's a little known little factoid about us. Both of us really enjoy the documentaries and docuseries that are about cults. Yes. We like, quite obsessed about it, actually. <laughs> we watch them. We text each other yes. about it. We make sure you have you seen this one. Yeah. We're. I think we're very interested in it because we're also very interested in human psychology. Yeah, because that's what fascinates me. It's the psychology behind it that fascinates me and in a lot of different respects, but mostly how do people get wrapped up in that and want to belong to something that could be quite damaging, you know, like, but. Yeah, we're, we're interested in how people both get in it why they get in it, why they stay and how they eventually get out, which is really what these the getting out is amazing. It yeah. is that uh, bravery boy. Bravery. Um, yeah. So we're, we're super interested in this from the lens. And if we're looking at it from the lens of psychology, one of the things that I've realized from watching so many of these is, <laughs> is that people who tend to get involved, may be looking for a place where they feel loved, where they can pursue love and even more than that, maybe a place where they feel like they belong. Yeah. They say, they being just sort of knowledge out there, <laughs> that we, we all need places that we feel that we belong. And when we don't, we will seek it in some ways that may be healthy and some ways that will not be healthy because human beings are hardwired to connect and feel belonging. We really need to feel that. Yeah. And I wonder if as we grow up, you know, as we grow up, things happen where and it happens to all of us where for some reason you're ostracized from a group. A group doesn't want to have anything to do with you. There's those kids over there and there's us and they don't want anything to do with us. And, and there are times when we have to enter spaces where we don't feel like we belong. What can help combat that is in early childhood education, providing children with a general sense that this is a world they belong in, mm -hmm. uh, that they are worthy of belonging and that they have a way to find their people. Right. That's what we ultimately have to do as human beings right. is we have to find our people. Yeah, because finding our people can be hard. Yeah. Well, especially for us, I think, because we never really grew up with this, like, I, at least I didn't, I didn't feel like I belonged in a group when I was a kid. So like, I think as I grew older, discovering who I was was very difficult, maybe because I didn't have the group to discover in, maybe you need a group to discover kind of who you are, but um now, now I have my people, but it took me a long time to get there, I think. Well, as people who, people who are listening to the podcast know, I moved a lot as a child. Yeah. So I, in school, did not have a sense of belonging for a long time. And then I think once I did, um, it was interesting. Like I had a group, let's say in middle school and high school that I went to classes with, but I didn't go to the same math classes as mm -hmm. them. So I had to once a day, every day, go into this group where I felt like I didn't really belong. Right. My friends weren't there. Right. Uh, and it was still hard at that age. But I think if we instill in, in children um, this sense of belonging, that from the time you were really young, there was a yeah. place that you belonged. Yeah. And it's more than just, we're going to have books about your culture here and we're going to have photos of your family here and we have your name on your cubby yeah. it's so much more it's, than that because I feel like it's more psychological like that's the physical stuff I think and I think that's almost like the superficial stuff like okay cool your name is on your cubby great awesome that's great it should be there but I think there's more psychology to it it's more um how you make the person feel you know like it's it's describe it it is way. sort of how you make the mean. person feel it's more you know but it's more than just like oh cool your family's hanging up you know it's it's fully accepting the person for who they are and we know that children and all human beings i think but especially i know that there's been studies about children they need to have 
at least one or two more places than home where they feel like they belong to positively yeah. develop a sense of positive self-esteem and self-worth and, and, and self-concept yeah. and all these things that we want them to feel good about who they yeah. are in themselves. They have to know that they belong. Yeah. So we wanted to provide you with some strategies. Some of these you may already do, which mm -hmm. is great. Some of them you might want to add on to, you know, beef up a little bit. Yeah. And other ones you might not have realized give children that sense of belonging in your setting so that your wherever they are with you can be a place that they belong in addition to maybe their families if you're listening to this and you're an early childhood yeah. professional of any kind. Yeah. Um so we have we have a list of strategies. Yeah. Which one do you want to start with? I kind of like this one. Okay. Cooperate like playing cooperative games because I don't think a lot of people always do that. You know, because I think like some of this other stuff, it, it's kind of like a routine thing that you do. But like, I don't think we always play cooperative games with children. Right. So like, I feel like that kind of gets like, oh, we'll do that tomorrow. Kind but it of doesn't thing. it doesn't only have to be board games. It can be we're going to go outside and toss the ball to each other. That's a cooperative. Right. Game. But I don't even think that's happening sometimes. Really? Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Only because. Yeah. <laughs> but we want depends on how you do recess. I think. We want the children yeah. to be playing cooperative games with each yeah. other. So we're going to set up. I most people play like the memory games with them, but that's yeah. an individual thing. That's more individual. I I think it's more about like teamwork. Like you, like when you mention like kicking the ball to each other, that's them doing it, not me. Not me. Yeah, I guess that's, yeah. that's a cooperative game. Yeah, I, that's also board games. Again, super important, but board games where they have to. Uh, cooperate with each other in some way where they have to support each other. Mm -hmm. So cooperative. And if you don't have board games, you can make some, you can, you can make them. There's some yeah. great resources out there that you can print off on the computer and make your own games, like mm -hmm. really great stuff out there that other people have created. There's a difference though, between games of competition and mm -hmm. cooperative games. So let's say we took that memory game, which is a very individual game, yeah. right? Trying yeah. to, and instead of having them do it individually, you know, the memory game, by the way, that I'm talking about is when you have the cards and you flip them over mm -hmm. and you have to try and find the match. So instead of having children do that individually, maybe we should team them up and say, oh, you two work idea. on it together. Yeah. You two work on it that's together. That's a great idea. Yeah. A puzzle can be a cooperative game if we ask oh. the children to do it together. Yeah, I, I recently did a really awesome STEM activity where I was like, you can work alone or you can work as a team. And a lot of them have cho had chosen to work together, like partnered, because they they I think they can sometimes see like, okay, there's more strength in numbers, like we could have more ideas this way. And they did, they did it beautifully, where they built these beautiful things together instead of and, and, and individually was an option, but they chose not to, which I think was really good. Well, another strategy on our list is encouraging teamwork. Mm -hmm. I think cooperative games, things like yeah. things like um, the memory game as a team, right. the what other games do we have in the bingo, right? Bingo. We have maybe you check your cards as a team. As a team. I've done that as as a team before, right? where it was more of like a partner or a team. Mm -hmm. And because you sometimes you just don't always have enough cards, so you kind of have to do it that way. Okay, so set up games in a way where the children yeah. have to cooperate with at least one other child, yeah. and then the teamwork. You know, that's the purpose. Uh, one of the purposes of large group time is just we're going to get together as a full team and talk. Mm -hmm. uh, it's to it's to help to create the classroom's community. So if we are helping to create community like that then we wanna make sure everybody has a chance if they would like to participate. Um, which brings us to another thing on our list, which is making children active agents mm -hmm. of their learning. Yeah. See all well, this is connected? It's all connecting. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Children need to be active in their own learning um, and they need to be inspiring each other through their mm -hmm. actions and reactions yeah. and be agents of their own learning in that we, we hand discoveries over to them. And we can do it as a team. Yeah. There's a video I often show of the project-based learning approach where children were going to design in their town. They had a large rock. Okay. And they were going to decorate this rock. The children decided what they wanted to add to the design, but then they went and did it all together as a team. That's nice. Right? Yeah. That's really good. I was speaking with someone the other day. We were talking about teaching children about nature. And... um. 
they were saying that they have a garden, an underused yeah. garden in yeah. their program that they yeah. rarely use it. And she was saying, oh, maybe we should be like looking at that garden and really getting the children in there and doing more with it right. than, than we've done. And they can do that in a way where children take uh, agency, but also work as right. a team together. Right. So the children taking agency would look like the children deciding what they want to plant in that garden. Yeah. And then helping each other and, to do the planting helping, is the teamwork. Yeah. yeah. Working as a team to make the garden grow. Yeah. Right? yeah. Yeah. So they can do both. They can make decisions that give them power and, and they can also, do things cooperatively. Yes. yes. To make things happen. And that actually, uh, you know, we, I think we often think of that as we're teaching socialization, but what you're also doing is giving the children a sense of belonging because you're mm -hmm. asking them to work together. Yeah. And, yeah, and build your community together. It's not just me going in and building the community because that's just me. It's them having these decisions makes them feel like they're part of the community, that their decisions matter. That's what community is. That's what society is, right? That your ideas matter. Don't don't you think, yeah. And don't you think that um, we, we sometimes resist that sort of teamwork because we're not sure the children can function in it but how can they learn to function they, in it if they never have the chance correct. to function right correct like i always had this like it's our classroom mine and the children's together we are one unit kind of thing like one community but there's some people that don't think that they don't think that the children are ready maybe or old enough to make decisions about certain things like like I, in my three and four year old class would absolutely ask about what do you want to plant in the garden? And then, but yeah. then you had to execute it. You have to yeah. do it. You can't you, say, yeah, you hey, can't. what do you want? Oh, sorry. I decided to plant zucchini, even though you wanted to plant tomatoes. You can't. Well, you can give you them know? limited choices. You yes. can say to them, yeah. here are some things. Like I did my research. I know right. what I can get. Right. Here are some things that we can plant in our garden. What do you yeah. all think? What do you want to do? I had somebody the other day ask me, can the children decide the topic that we are studying in our class over the next month? I said, sure. Sure they yeah, can. Yeah. So that's another example where yeah. you say to the children, limited choices. You can't just do anything. I have but, just so many materials. Yes. So you say to the children, you know, we can we can work on studying this topic mm -hmm. or this topic. Which one do you want? Yeah. And and that's another way of sort of being a team and cooperating because mm -hmm. they have to make this. Yeah. They have to come to a decision together. Right. Uh, another strategy, in addition to cooperative games, encouraging teamwork and giving children active agency in their learning and decision-making power is encouraging the children to help each other. Yeah. You know, there are so many times when during cleanup, one child makes a mess and then another child goes to clean it up and the adults all tell the dad child not to do that. They say, don't go clean up the other child's mess. But the actually, <laughs> that's, I know, yeah. actually that's a child helping another child. So we can point out to the yeah. child who made the mess, look, Here's someone helping you clean yeah. this up yeah, and encourage that helping each other right. instead of trying to stop the helping each well, other. I don't, for yeah, I don't quite understand the stopping. I've seen that happen though. I know what you mean. Yeah. They're like, oh no, he made the mess. He's got to clean it. And I was like, no. How is, is that creating teamwork and belonging? Not, it's not creating community because like if you, okay, that'd be like, the park is dirty outside. I didn't make it dirty, but I'm going to go clean up the litter anyway. Because yeah. it helps society, it helps my community, it helps everybody involved, right? So like in the classroom, when a child is like, oh, I didn't play blocks, but I'll help her clean. To me, that's taking care that's of- That's a beautiful your, thing. Taking care of your community, taking care, helping people, like showing them that like, what I, I might not have done that, but I could still help them fix it, you know, kind of thing. We do that as adults all the time but that's yeah, it's, so even, like, it's even something like you know a child is trying to push a chair in and they're having trouble doing it instead of me as the adult which is so easy to do me as right. the adult go over and just push just it in it. right just yeah. do it so that we can get outside to the playground right instead saying to another child can you help her yeah or can you help him push that chair in please yeah, yeah. right yeah um you know can you give her something she's looking for can you yeah hand her the band-aid or it always reminds me of band-aids right, I don't know packs, hey, ice packs. Yeah. it's always the ice packs usually <laughs> yeah but I I do that all the time I'm like who's going like I sometimes I don't know who made the mess so I'm like who's going to help clean this yeah. like it's our classroom we need to take care of our classroom and part of being a part of the community is caring and being kind to your environment so cleaning up is 
part of that so the things don't break. So let's do it together. Yeah. Doesn't matter who made the mess, you know? And once you have that, you because I think in the other kind of classrooms where they're like, no, he did it. So make him do it. You have a lot of finger pointing and then kids don't clean up. You know, they're like, well, he did it. I'm not cleaning for him. Whereas like, what are we teaching in my are? class? It's like, oh yeah, no, I'll help you. You know, like it's constantly, they're always just clean. When it's clean up time, they clean. I don't, I don't care. In our you last, <laughs> in our last episode, we talked about meeting anger with love. Yeah. And I think that this is love is also the underpinning of yes. these strategies, right? Yes. We're going to work together and cooperate yes. and create a teamwork and an atmosphere yes. of uh, community and love. Yeah. And that that helps children feel belonging in mm-hmm. this sort of setting, whatever setting mm-hmm. they're, they're in, helps them feel belonging. And I think that they probably take the message in yeah. that if I can, if I feel like I belong in this class, then I belong in classes yeah. and I can find the people who I enjoy right. spending time with as right. they get older. Yes. You know, it's not, I, it hopefully doesn't become things like, you know, I don't like school. I don't belong there. I don't mm-hmm. like learning. I'm mm-hmm. not going to be good in yeah. this learning group. Yeah. I'm going to do terrible in elementary yeah. school, middle school, high school. Yeah. That's like the, the sure. rabbit hole yeah. of, I don't, I don't belong. belong. Um, so I think it's still talking about that whole, you know, we're going to meet with love. We're going to meet everything with love, including helping children to create a community. And it can't just be me. It can't be, you know, I'm going to lead a large group time. And so we are acting as a community. It has to, the children have to have an active part in this, Yes, which is another reason why large group time has to be highly discussion-based and activity-based. Because they have to be playing an active role. Them just sitting in chairs doesn't create a sense of belonging. Right. But I feel like a lot of teachers think that, that they have to run large group time or meeting time or whatever it is that you call it. Cause like they're the teacher. And to me, it's like, that's the whole, like, it's my classroom, not yours. Here's Where the really, thing it's, though. It's all of our classrooms, right? It's, it's my classroom. It's, really, it's, really it's really theirs. theirs. Yeah. It's really the tiny yeah. little chairs and the tiny little yeah. tables are for their benefit. Yeah. The materials you have in the room are for their benefit. Or like for me, like, like when I walk in in September, the room is blank, <sighs> nothing on the walls, nothing. Right. Because it's not for me to decorate. It's, for, it's them. for them to decorate. What do you want to hang on the walls? What artwork should we hang? Should we hang this poster here? Would you like this here? It's not my room. And then that's why right. every single year, my classroom looks different because I'm like, it's not, it's not mine. It's theirs. If you give children the agency mm-hmm. to help you with deciding what's going to decorate the room, it becomes their, their space. space. Yeah. And, and, and so they belong, they feel mm-hmm. that sense of belonging even yeah. more. Wouldn't it be nice if children exited the early childhood years knowing I can, I can create a community around myself mm-hmm where I belong. Be awesome. I've learned how to make some decisions yeah. and I've learned how to negotiate yeah. play. I've also learned that I can participate in cooperative and teamwork based activities. Yeah. Uh, and I've learned that this sort of a setting is a place where I can potentially right. belong. Right. You know, not they have to learn how to find their people, right. which is something else you help them with. Right. 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 Like I, I've them said the tools, to children, I feel. you're giving them the tools yeah. to know how to do that on their own. Eventually. I've said, you yeah. know, I've children like, especially around the pre-K year mm-hmm. and older yeah. where they've said, I don't like to play with her. And I told them that's okay. That's okay. You can find someone yeah. you want to play with. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's okay. You can find your people is basically the message of that. Right. Right. But I think there's sometimes that people are like, no, you all have to play cooperatively, just play with her. And it's like, no, I don't, I think we should be forcing them to play with people that they don't enjoy playing with. Like, or maybe they just don't enjoy playing with them today. They might change yeah. tomorrow. But like, I think there's a lot of good points and value in saying that's okay. You don't have to play with her because that allows them to go find their people instead of forcing them into a group. Right. Which is ultimately what I want to do. Comfortable in. Yeah. I want them to know. Yes, we have cultural books here yes. and we have pictures of your families and right you know we're going to give everybody like we said in the last episode we're going to give everybody a re- or two episodes ago yeah. maybe yeah. we're going to give everybody a responsibility in here and everyone's going to play a role in here yeah right we said yeah. that a couple of episodes yeah, ago I think so yeah so everyone's going to play a role in here and you you belong here because you have a role mm-hmm. I would definitely give out classroom jobs yeah. and make it part of the routine yeah. you have a role you have something you're responsible to the group for <clears throat> So it's not, it's not just those responsibilities are not just, this is your responsibility. Yeah. 
you are responsible to the group. Yes. And I would teach the yes. children, this is your responsibility to help the class. Yes. Not just because we want you to understand responsibility. We want you to help the class. Yes. So when you're introducing jobs to children, it's you're going to help the class, the class by, by doing you're going to help us yes. all by doing this. Yes. Yes. Um, I remember children who would be so upset when it was their turn to be the caboose on the line. They were the last person. They don't like that necessarily. <laughs> and I used to tell them, I used to tell them, we can't get out of the room safely without the caboose, right? right? You're helping your everybody. Is to make sure yeah. that everybody gets outside safely. Safely, yeah. yeah. And they take that and they will own it. They're like, you know, because I've had children be like, his shoe's untied. Yeah. I was like, well, I can't see that because I'm in the front. So thank you, caboose. Thank you so I've much. Had, <laughs> I've had my fair share of cabooses on the line. <laughs> Tell me things like, he has zipped his coat. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. 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 See, it's safe to have your coat zipped up during cold weather. So there you go. There you go. We needed our caboose. You got to spin, spin those kind of things. Spin, I think all of these responsibilities in the classroom too. You're doing this for the benefit of everybody. However, you need to put that phrase that for the developmental level of children. This is for the benefit of everybody. Because isn't that as adults, isn't that what we do? This is, you know, why do I have my job? It's for the benefit of society in some way. Right. We all play a role society to run right yeah if we didn't it wouldn't run right and so we're trying to teach children that yeah to sum up yes (laughs) cooperative games yeah teamwork children making decisions about the space that they're in and Mm -hmm. what they're going to do within that space also greater family involvement if it's possible we know that that's not always possible for all families helping each other um, and encouraging ways for them to help each other and reminding them that the things that we do here impact the whole community and can benefit the whole community. Yes. yes. Okay. okay. So go out there and, and give children a really strong sense of belonging in the early childhood years because they have plenty of time for people to get mean and erode it. But if we build, True. what but is it about erosion? If, if, if you, you build, build them up, yes. <laughs> even if some of it erodes, erode because you don't want them to grow up and join a cult. And then I see it. <laughs> and then I see it on like on there, streaming but... services. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I don't want to see somebody I know on there one day. No, I really don't. I <laughs> so... really don't. All right, folks. Um, we hope that you'll think about that sense of belonging that you're trying to foster. Because again, if you... Mm-hmm create a strong enough foundation for it, then the erosion that takes place over the foundation won't matter as much. Yes. See you next time on the podcast, peeps. Have a great week. Bye.